Yeah, we're live, 7.03. Tonight we're talking about towing. <laughs> so so the question is, what exactly makes a towing cam? So I get I get these questions a lot. And, and on all of the, I'm, the the thumbnail that I'm showing is a Brian Tui rating towing cam, as it were, a truck Norris or, or the torque cam or, you know, something small stage one truck cam or something. The question is, is are those good for towing? And, and so I want people to let me know. I want people to chime in in the comments. And then if you're watching this video after the live feed, chime in and let me know what is your, what exactly is your definition of a towing cam? Like, what are you looking for? And here's my problem with this is when I provide this dyno testing, so we'll run, let's say a stock cam, and then we'll run a, some other kind of cam, a truck Norris or a or torque cam or a chupacabra, whatever it is, we'll run some sort of camshaft. And then let's say that we even did a test where we ran it down at 2000 RPM, ran from 2000 to 6000 or whatever, 6500, whatever the number is. Cause I've, I did that when I did all the stock cams because all the stock cams are designed to make power down there and 2000 RPM or thereabouts is a, is a pretty good estimation of where a motor would be at wide open throttle with a stock converter. And since most of these towing applications, and when I say most, I mean 99.9% .9 of them would be automatic transmission applications in trucks anyways. And very, very few manual transmission trucks. I know they made some, but but like a handful. So really we're talking about automatic towing truck applications. And so here's my question for you guys, and not, not something I'm answering, but but I want you guys to answer. My question is, is what is what are people's definitions of a towing cam? And I know immediately the answer is, well, we, you know, it needs to make more torque. OK, that's a general answer, I guess. But where do you want it to make more torque? You're not on a tr on a camshaft. If you put a stock camshaft in something like if we're talking about a typical 5.3 or a small block Chevy or small block Ford or whatever it is, you're talking about something with a stock camshaft in it at 2000 RPM. It's going to be really hard to make more torque than a stock camshaft because it's a stock camshaft actually does fairly well there. It's designed specifically to do fairly well there by, by, the, by the manufacturer. And so they do very well. And also, the other thing that makes this difficult is that, you know, when we put camshafts in, we get big power gains from 4,500 or 5,000 on out. That's pretty typical of gains. On some cams, like with the truck Norris and the torque cam, we can also get some gain lower than that, let's say down to 3,000, sometimes maybe even 2,500. But the gains that you get there are, are very, very minimal, in, especially in comparison. We, we maybe get 40, 50, 60, 70 horsepower out at the top. Excuse me, but we might get <laughs> anywhere from nothing to a couple of foot pounds, maybe 10 down low. And when I say down low, down to 2,000, 2,500 or whatever, we could start to get more than that, maybe at 3,000. But it isn't until that range where we start seeing camshafts really come into their own. And, and, and I'm sure somebody's going to mention VVT. And yes, but but we don't, I don't run testing on VVT, uh, like converted LS3 LS motors or, or even LS4s that actually had them that had VVT. You can do that with, with VVT stuff. You can improve power down low. But really, again, because of the way VVT works and because of all of the technology and research and development from the factory in their VVT cams, when they would be using for towing and cruising and the things that they designed them all for, they actually work fairly well. So the problem is, you know, people, and I think it's probably a misconception on a lot of people's part, and that's that, hey, I can get, if I put a small camshaft in there, truck Norris, torque cam, chop cover, what stage one, whatever cam, that there's somehow some kind of cams where I can get a whole, like I get 50 foot pounds of torque down low. <laughs> that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen with any camshaft. It can't do that. It's not because people don't know how to. It's not because they don't understand camshafts. It's not because they haven't tightened the lobe separation angle. It's not any of that. It's because a camshaft doesn't do that. That's not possible, like down at 2000 RPM with cam timing, depending on where you're starting from. But those kind of gains are not possible. You're not going to get that down there. You can get that from compression helps, displacement helps a lot. Boost obviously helps a lot. Long tube headers. You can get gains actually that would be greater than a camshaft from other things. But you're not going to get that from cam timing. It's very, very difficult. 
And so my question again is, then what makes a towing cam? So when I get somebody that says, I want a cam for towing or rock crawling, are they, are they thinking that, are they thinking that, are they thinking that, oh, well, I'm going to get a, gain a bunch of torque at 2000 RPM because that's not going to happen. The, the better way to go about something like that, if you're rock crawling is put lots of gear in and put, put, if you have an automatic transmission, put converter in it so that you're, so that you're running the combination and applying the power where the motor is actually making power, not asking it to do something that it can't do. A camshaft is not gonna all of a sudden turn your 5.3. It's not gonna make 6.0 power with, or 6.0 torque at 2000 RPM with any camshaft. It's not gonna do that. It can't do that because it's not possible. It's not, not, in, not in the, <laughs> not, not, as, not with the laws of physics as we know them and enjoy them. That's just not gonna happen you know, maybe or put a positive displacement blower on it or a really small turbo or that kind of thing, a bigger motor, obviously, a six liter or 408 or 415 or something, then you can do that. Or the other thing that you can do is raise the RPM to a realistic level where the thing can actually improve power. Then you have to think, okay, well, is it, and 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 for, forget about rock crawling for a second, let's just look at towing. What happens during towing? Like what actually makes a good towing cam? So when you're driving down the freeway, towing a, a fifth wheel or a boat or whatever it is you're towing, and you're towing that, when you're driving down a flat section of highway, every cam is a towing cam. I mean, a stock one works fine, you, you know, depending on how much throttle angle you have to put into it, but it'll go down the road at 50, 60, 70 miles an hour, however fast you think you need to go. It's really... I think, and, and people let me know if I'm wrong, but I think what people are thinking about when we turn when we start talking about towing cams is they want more power when they need more power, i.e., when I'm going up a hill towing the thing that's back behind me. I'm towing the boat or a fifth wheel or a trailer or something, and I need to be able to go up mountain grades, which we all have between us where we are and wherever we want to get to. We're going to a lake, we're going to the ocean, we're going camping, I'm going down to West Tech, whatever's going to happen. There, there are mountain ranges in between us, and we need to be need to go up hills. When I had to take the the Omni out to Ohio, there's lots of hills between me and Ohio. So we had to do that. So then the question becomes, well, if I'm picking a towing cam and I'm going to use it for that kind of application, when I'm going up a hill, I'm not at 2000 RPM. I might be at 2000 RPM cruising down the freeway at, at, at a level freeway at 2000 RPM where I'm going 70 miles an hour in my truck, if it's any indication, you're going 70 miles an hour and you're driving down the road, you know, that cam works fine. A stock cam works fine. Any of these other smaller cams would also work fine. When we start going up a hill and going up a load, you're always going to drop down into a different gear. You're, you're not going to go up. You're not going to drive down Highway 5 and then go up the grapevine towing a trailer with a 1500, a 5.3 truck <laughs> and not go into a different gear, not go out of overdrive. You're going to be down in third gear going up some of these grades. Same thing with going from West Tech to Vegas. The, the grades that you have to go through, you have to go to the Cajon Pass. You got to go through um, the Mountain High or whatever it is. Um, whatever that mountain, whatever the mountain grade is coming up out of the Baker grade. Um, all, all of that. So if you're going up a hill, you're not going to be at 2000 RPM. So should you really be concerned about the trying to get a big improvement in torque production with a camshaft? truck Norris or torque cam or um, should you be that concerned with that number there? Cause it's not going to gain, you're never going to gain a lot from a camshaft. This is not going to happen. Uh, you know, people can promise you the moon, but that's not reality. No test that I've ever run shows that you can get big gains down there with a camshaft. Um, I had extensive conversations with somebody who was actually trying to do that because they were, this was on a different application. This was on a big block Ford, I think. And it was my buddy, Jimmy from HP, and they had done industrial motors to use to drive generators. And they were run, they had to run about 1800 RPM. So 1800 to right in that range, 1800 RPM. And, and so he was talking to me about cam timing. I said, look, I, you know, you could try all of these things that we've talked about wiggling this duration around a single pattern, dual pattern, reverse pattern. I said, you could try all of this stuff. I said, but you're, he said, yeah, we tried a ton of camshafts. 
and we could wiggle it around one or two kilowatts or whatever. So this was not very much. I said, yeah, I would expect that. I said, if honestly, if it were me, I'd be looking at gigantic runner length. I would be putting a 20 inch or, or longer inch runner length on there to see what that would do. See if that would help. I said, I would look somewhere else and make the motor bigger. If you can, if you can do that instead of a 460, make it a 550 or something, you could definitely pick up a ton of power there, but cam timing, it's just not going to happen. You got to do the other things, header, compression, displacement, you know, boost. If you could do that, um, runner length would definitely improve that a lot. And I've done lots of long runner intake manifold tests in the past where we've shown, yeah, it makes a lot of power. Camshaft is not going to do that. So I think when in the future, when we start talking about towing camshafts, I think you honestly need to look at 3000 RPM as the number for towing. Because if you go up a grade and you're towing a trailer up a grade, you will be at 3000 RPM. In fact, my guess is that you will be at a even higher RPM than that uh, in the lower gear. Sometimes I, I know when I, even when I was towing the little Omni and I was just towing it with the, um, with a tow dolly and it's a very light car. It didn't even have an engine in it. So it was a very light car. And I was still in some of the really, really big grades. I was in second gear. My stock motors not, doesn't make very much power, especially now that I know it, it, it had pulled six or eight degrees of timing out of it. It certainly didn't make any power then, um, but it didn't make enough to break the transmission. <laughs> we know that. So, you know, and at 6,000, I mean, in second gear, we were at a very high RPM and we were up in an RPM range where camshafts would definitely come into play 4,500 or wherever we were um, at the speed that we were going up the hill. So it definitely come into play there. So that's my question for you guys. Let me know. I'm, I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say about towing cams because you're just not going to get, I mean, otherwise, if you, if a guy just wants the power at, at 2,000 RPM, if that's all you really care about, then you should have a stock camshaft in it because I don't know that you're going to get much better than that. And speaking of stock camshafts, I wanted to uh, point something out that, and if you're looking at stock camshafts, especially down in that RPM range, the stock mildest LM7 camshaft, LR4 camshaft is very, very hard to beat. You're, if you look at all of my data on the camshafts that I did where I ran all of the stock cams, that camshaft is hard to beat. Every other camshaft loses a bunch of power at least up to 4,000 RPM. Every one of them, LS1, LS2, LS3, LS6, LS, LS7, and LS9 especially lose a ton down low. Now they gain a bunch of power at the top as do the other cams, but everything is softer down low compared to those cams. You know, I don't know, maybe if we ran it at 1500 RPM, maybe, maybe they would come back and make the same. But everything else made a whole bunch less torque down low than that particular camshaft. It's very mild. It's designed for a truck. It does what it's supposed to do and works fairly well. Um, on some of these really small cams, like these 200 degree uh, single pattern cams that we tested from crane cams, those can pick up a little bit down there. But again, it's... It's, it's a tiny amount compared to the gains that you get. At the, even on that one, you know, that cam, let's say that cam gained 30 horsepower, but it gained eight foot pounds or something down low. So it's not, it's not a ton. Um, it's not as much as people would want, even on a very, very mild cam like that. So let me know what you guys are thinking about. Let me know um, on, on towing cams. Are you thinking that they should add a whole bunch of power? Like what kind of range do you think that they're, where, where should they be adding a bunch of um, torque and what, in what RPM range? Okay, for towing, do you want a cam that adds extra torque at 2,000 to 2,500 RPM? We'll see what people have to say. Kind of curious. Kind of curious if that's the if that's what people are thinking when they're thinking about these towing cams. Torque, we all want all the torque. That's right. <laughs> it sticks. That's right. You're the first one. You're in the pole position. Stock or maybe a little smaller. So what do you think about that, Eric? What, do you think if we went smaller than a 191 cam that we could pick up torque down there? Maybe smaller, because uh, one of the things that the, and this this might be interesting, we could get uh, uh, get David Visard's opinion on this and, and all the David Visard disciples. So what if we took a stock cam 
and made a, a, a really tight LSA version of the stock cam. Cause all the stock cams are, you know, 117, 119 kind of duration things. Um, some, some of them are a little bit less than that, but they're all going to be in the teens. So what if we made like a 191 cam that was on a 107 or 108 or something? Maybe, maybe that would be the way to go. And then maybe you could get more torque. I guarantee if you do that though, it's going to, it's, it's not going to make power at the top, but maybe people for towing cams only care about that. Let, let me know what you guys think. In my opinion, a towing cam is a low revving, high torque cam, maybe for engine really taking a 5,000. Yep. I, I agree with that. The problem is <laughs> the first part of that RPM range, we just can't really do very much. Can I post a link from Jegs as an example? I don't know what you are trying to post. Towing cam comp 280 and a 396. <laughs> do you think that's a little big? I just did an EGR delete and shorty headers on my 1500. It has a cold air intake already, and I'll be installing the Truck Norris NSR cam. Cool. Cam, would you use a Cadillac 500 for towing? I the stock one or the or or a, there are a lot of little cams that they also use. The nice thing about that motor is it be, being 500 inches, it already makes a ton of torque. And, and, and makes a ton of torque with those other cams too. See, as we go up in displacement, you can go up in cam timing to, to make power in that same RPM range. Here's BTR stage three, 218, 224 with my Stroker LS. And it was amazing pulling a 5,000 pound boat on ramp. I never even went to 2,000 RPM. Cool. I'm, I'm surprised that, that uh, that's a, well, if it's a Stroker one, that would be better. I used my XR264 and my 355 and the one compression aluminum heads, full length headers. It's a good daily and a heavy vehicle. Very cool. Is that a carbureted one? Three seventy three gears. Nineteen seventy seven Chevy had. K20 plowing a field, another pulling three semi loads of logs. I'm towing with my 03 S10 ZR2 Turbo Vortec Tornado 4.3 liter five speed. I usually don't downshift. That's the nice thing about a turbo because you're just adding load, and then the turbo says, "Oh, you that's what you want." Okay, let's do that. Are you utilizing an Allison 300? Torque limited to a maximum of 2,800 RPM. There's no aftermarket support to reprogram it. For a 10 liter big block, we're going to try 200, 206, and a 210, 220. Okay. I ran a two. Uh, I have to look. I ran a 200-ish cam on a 455, for 454. It might have been a 468. It might have been board over um, in my truck. That were good for the street. The EP2201 wants to tear my Turbo 400 apart. I kind of doubt that that little cam could hurt a Turbo 400. Turbo 400s are pretty stout. I want my uh, cam to sit there and chuckle. Low end torque for the win. How about the BTR torque cam? That that is a good one. But again, even with that cam, that's a 202 cam, which is pretty small. Like the like the 200 cams. That's a single pattern cam. Um, it, yeah, it is a single pattern cam. Um, but it still doesn't add a ton of torque down low. Richard, have you thought about building engines? I've built lots of engines, but just not. I don't want to build engines for sale. <laughs> Turker coming in around 3,000 and climbing from there. Truck Norris for the win. And I have Truck Norris's available if you guys are interested. I'm not sure what cam it is, but my 400 small block produces 300 foot-pounds at 1,500, increasing to 410 foot-pounds at 2,400. What cam is it? I, I don't know. You, you should be able to tell us. We don't know any, I don't know anything about that motor. I don't know what else you have on it. Just don't want to lose any torque in that range. Now that I think about this, I kind of want to see what the, let's take a look at that um, Ford. It's 
small block Ford, Cleveland, 400M. The 400M had 409 foot pounds at 1900. And over 400 from 1900 to 3200. And this was when it was stock. This is when it made 267 horsepower. That was probably, was that a, <laughs> that was with a two barrel carburetor. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Final stock. And it made the same torque down low with the Y and four barrel, but it ended up making more torque, 428 foot pounds, but out at 3,400. But below that, it was the same. It was still, it was still above 400 foot pounds. So it did good on the 400M, especially since it's a very, it was a low compression motor. Just don't want to lose any torque in that range, but gain above that, like your test for the Truck cams have proven that in the past 10 to 15 foot pounds more at 3,000 can be achieved in a 4.8. Yeah, I think I think at 3,000 that's probably a safe range. Okay. Yeah, the Trek Norse NSR cam doesn't gain anything at 3,000 on a 4.8, but probably the... Um, probably the Torque cam would, though. Let's look at these little cams. Yeah, 3,000 on a 4.8, uh, the little crane cams, 313 versus 327. So that was good. Four fifty five Buick should be good for towing. Yeah, the four fifty five Buick is good, and the the Cadillac certainly even more so. Richard, I have an eighty three El Camino with a four eight carbureted on stage one cam. I'm pretty excited to see how it reacts. That'd be good. Uh, hopefully, you have a dual plane on that. Definitely want a dual plane. Marvin, watching in Dubai. That's cool. Asking which cams did set up in a B20 non-turbo, kind of pistons, 84 millimeters. Um, JE makes good stuff. Wiseco has stuff for that. Um, that's typically what we would use in those. Um, I don't, I don't know about that. The only non VTEC cams that we've tried, I'm sure skunk has some and all, all the regular guys. I think we tried some comp ones in the non, non, in the non VTEC motors. To me, a towing cam should work before 4,600 RPM. They do. They add power before that. But if I look at this, um, Look at that crane cam. Even even on a, a on a four eight, even this crane cam, which was a 200, 208, on a four eight, it makes peak torque at forty nine hundred RPM. That's on a stock four eight, stock truck manifold, long tube headers, and makes peak power out at six thousand. 
So that gives you any idea of what cams do on the little motors. Low die drags in three weeks, heavy trucks with 413 Dodge. Former RPM air gap and Edelbrock AVS. 413 truck motor. What what cam do you recommend for a stock truck 350? Uh, Sam, what year is it? And for hydraulic flat tap, that, that Pure Energy 246 is a legal cam and it works good. 99% stock, L83, speed enduring long tubes, X-pipe, true duels, 373 gears, upgrading the transmission. Still can't decide on which cam heads and intake to go with, towing. So you're towing with it? I don't think I would go crazy with the camshaft. Um, Brian Tooley Racing has some good L83 camshafts. And I don't know that I would do anything with the heads. Maybe you could port them. And the intake manifold that you have is really good. Maybe just an L86 intake manifold. The one with plugs on top running all day at high power. We developed a... Yeah, I know what a 413 is. For 440 motorhomes and transit buses on propane, we use 256 to a 5 at 50. Yeah. That seems right in the right range. Building a 408 stroker out of my LQ4 and I already have a BTR Stage 4 truck cam. Would it be worth buying 400 plus NA cam from BTR over this one I have? And would my 243s work on this? Your 243s will work on that, but they're going to be holding back the power with that big cam on a 408. And I don't know which intake manifold you have on that, but the the stock heads are, um, the 243 heads are definitely going to be holding back a 408, especially if you put that 400 cubic inch NA cam in it. We made 625 with a cam a lot smaller than that. But we had good heads on it. We had airflow research heads because the airflow research head stuff is really good. Towing compression might help more. Volumetric efficiency might improve mileage if cam was picked up for operating range or slightly greater like an RV cam. But what is an RV cam? Same thing. An RV cam is just the previous name of these truck cams. How much do long collectors? Are you talking about the primary length of the header or the collector extension? Uh, you're you're going to have a collector extension on your, because you're going to have exhaust anyway. So that will help. What cam for a six liter L98 for the best low end torque and horsepower? You got to just got to tell me where you want, where do you want the power? I don't know what you mean by low end torque and horsepower. I have lots and lots and lots. I have like endless videos up on six liter performance. So you could take a look at the, all the stuff that we ran up there. Uh, Michael, you have, do have a, you do, do have a dual plane. Definitely with a 4.8, you'll want a dual plane. Richard, with a Truck Norris NSR cam, my 6-liter, do you think I'll have valve flow when adding a turbo on the stock valve springs? It depends on how high you run it. My guess is you're not going to be running a lot of RPM with that. Years ago, the torque grind was a 208, 216 with a 110. Not sure if that's completely out of date now. The XE258. Was that... What was that for? Was that for a Ford or Chevy or what was it? I think the Holly 750 double pumper with mechanical secondaries is a little overkill for a 48. Not not for one. I mean, we've you know made a lot of power with canned 48s and run a lot of RPM with them, and they work well. Uh, in fact, we ran a 750 on the one that we did the testing when we ran it NA before we put the 850 with the Vortex supercharger on it. And we did that on a 4.8 and also on a 6 liter. So the Vortex supercharger also obviously, you know, makes a lot of power. But we ran the 750 on the 4.8 and it worked fine. I don't know for a mild cammed one, I probably would pick a 650. Something a little bit bigger than stock, off topic, but I'm getting a catfish. 
with original LS1. Am I wrong thinking that the LS1 doesn't hold power as a 5.3 and a 6.0? I was thinking 150 shot. 150 shot on an LS1 is not a problem at all. Neither is a turbo. We normally don't go over a thousand horsepower on LS1 aluminum blocks, but it doesn't sound like you're going to be anywhere near that. So that's fine. 400 M with closed chamber heads and a small cam could pull a ton. Yeah, I, I can't remember where the piston was, how far down in the hole it was. That would concern me on the 400. But having the proper piston and having it be at zero deck, and then a, then a good closed chamber head, I think would be a good combination on there. Does anybody know what Nick should look out for when looking at a catfish Camaro? Alan, you'll be at Lodi for the drag races. It seems like big displacement and large pistons and large bores produce good low end torque. Yep, and so do long strokes. As long as they add displacement, then they add torque. Have you ever tested a Brodix IK200 heads or heard anything about them? I don't know if I have. I'd have to go back and look and see what Brodix heads I've tested. Could I hire you to do remote tuning on the Holly system? I'm not a tuner, so I'd be the wrong guy. I wouldn't be the right guy for that. If I use a V6 Dodge engine for rally off-road, can I still call it an RT if the R means rally and the T means terrain? Yeah, that's good. Looking getting ported heads, LA6 ported intake and throttle body and a DOD delete with a truck nor setup. That'd be good. I don't know that you need to port the L86 intake manifold. I don't know that that's going to gain you much, but... KD in my, tur in my turbo big block Chevy square body I use for towing is running a little comp 218, 228, 109, 500 lift. Has no problem hitting triple digits up an 8% grade with a 14,000 pound trailer and a 6,000 load. Does anyone know how long it takes to get a custom cam grind from comp cams? It's been almost two months since I submitted to comp cams. Just curious. I don't, I don't know how long that takes. Did you ask them? Have you, have you talked to them to get an update? Running a trailblazer SS intake manifold on the 4.8 with porting the stock 243s be a good option or is it worth buying a set of AFR heads? The AFR heads are excellent as are many of the trick flow heads and mast heads. There's a lot of good heads out there. You can also have your, you, you can port your own 243s, but unless you're really, really good, you're not going to get out of them what other people that have CNC programs for those heads. Once you port those heads, those heads will be as good as the other, after, or almost as good as the other aftermarket heads that are out there in terms of flow and power potential. What they don't have that the other heads have is they don't have very thick decks. So if you're running a lot of boost, if you're running an NA motor, then don't worry about it. If you're running a boost and a lot of boost, then you have to start worrying about um, head gaskets and, and the d distortion of the deck. Bringing a white 69 Chevelle with new black front end. Cool. To the drag race. What, what motor's in that? It's 57. Richard, building a 400 Ford for my F250, 4x4, 650 Holley, aluminum intake, a little head work. T Meyer pistons to get around nine to one. That should be a good combination. That that should make more than we made with with the mild combinations of the four hundred that we put together. I don't remember what the compression was on ours. Single carb tunnel ram for torque. Uh, no, a tunnel ram is probably going to make less torque at two thousand and twenty five hundred RPM than a dual plane is. It's going to be better at some point and and a lot better than a single plane. more interested in optimize the bore to stroke ratio for lower highway engine speed. How, how is the bore to stroke ratio going to affect the operating RPM? Isn't that just going to be gearing? VTR MS4 cam was pretty fun in a 4.8. Yeah, that, that would be a lot. It was built for burnout cars, also no low end power and to cut valve release in the stock pistons. I would think for that cam, yeah. But it should have... I mean, it should have made decent power. If you, did you have stock heads and stuff on it? Do 
Gen 453 with a cam motion, little loper. Almost a truck Norris inspections or something with similar power, but a better idle. I don't know. I don't know what that. I'm trying to think of what we ran. We ran one of the cam motion cams, but I don't know which. I don't remember now which one it was. Let's see here. Cam Mo. Let's see what this one is. This is saying it's a 214, 222, 108. Is that right? Why do I think I have the wrong cam there? Let's go somewhere else here. Here we go. Truck Norris versus Chapacabra cam motion file test description. Cam motion was a 553 lift, 216, 224, 108. That's that's bigger than a truck Norris. It's bigger duration wise and uh, still has a 108. I'd have to look at the um, intake opening and closing to get a better idea, but I wouldn't think that that would look idle as well. Crane used to have a flat tap at 208, 216 that they used to offer in Fords and big blocks, I think. Next saw similar timing in the Comp XE258 for small block Fords, just their guess. Uh, well, Comp owned Crane, so for a while. Small block Ford. Stream energy flat tap of cams. I see a 256 and a 262, 212, 218, and 218, 224. The XE258 is a hydraulic roller. The HR cam is a hydraulic roller. I, I've used a 258 before. 206, 480, 114. That's probably, now that I think about that, 206, 212. Pure energy is a 203, 212. So it's comparable to that pure energy cam that, that I've used a lot. What's a, good, what's a good cam for a stock LS3? Just tell me how much power you want, mate. Uh, I have lots of videos up on LS3 stuff with, with a whole bunch of different cams to for you to decide how much power you want. How big of a cam can I use and still use stock valve springs? You can use a truck Norris NSR cam, a no springs required cam, and, and but it depends on what springs you use. The For the LS, there are two sets of factory springs. There is the 706-862 springs that are like good for 500 lift. And then there's the LS6, LS3, LS2, LY6 springs. They're good for 550 lift. So you can use cams that have that. Um, but you can't use a ton of duration on those because you'll run into valve float. And you can't use usually use those springs with, with roller rockers either because you'll run into valve float. You actually need more spring rate than those have. Lifting heads is always fun. Yep. It took me a month to get my cam motion cam. Com might, comp might have a larger customer base. Cam motion guys are pretty good about that. Tubbed out 96 Geo Metro on Marketplace in Ohio. <laughs> Was it, is, is it done up for a rural drive? Sloppy stage two of the world. Yep. You can do, you can use that cam. Six liter cam for towing. For towing, I would think I would go with the truck Norris cam. I have that, and I also have one step bigger than that if you want to go bigger than that. 
Dustin, if I run a fast manifold, would I have to port the heads or would it be okay to run stock 799 heads? I need something low for my swap. I'm still new at this stuff or do you recommend a different manifold? I The fast manifold works very well and you can use it with your stock heads. I don't normally recommend that you use a fast manifold with something that has stock 799 heads because obviously you're not looking for maximum power if you have stock 799 heads. So if you put a cam in it and you have stock 799 heads, I think I would put a different manifold on there. I would put a, a truck or a Trailblazer SS. If you need something low, then uh, an LS6 uh, maybe, or a Dorman LS2, although those are expensive now too. Looking to get a tow rig with an 8.1. Uh, you lost me at the word thoughts. I want to call a turbo 3.9 RX7 RTX 7A. Okay, that's that's way too complicated. BTR MS4 cam 4.8 had 706 heads, which cracked. I'll shake the oil and then spun four lifters. Oh, that they rotated in the in the lifter trays. The only LS, LS motor that you spun to 8,000. What intake did you have on it that you're going to 8,000 with? Props to all your hard work. Thanks, Odin's, Odin's Hall. So are you Norwegian too? For my Pontiac, it's a 224-228. Has it telling grunt? Yes, yeah, is, that, is that in a 455 thumper? Wouldn't you want torque a little higher? I think I want more power in the acceleration range, not the steady low power range. Yeah, like I said, it's very hard to get down there. Maybe I missed it, but what makes a cam produce more torque? Uh, duration, LSA, lift, all of those things. Valve events. But the question isn't that. The question is, where do you want your torque? Where do you want more torque? Do you want it at 2,000 RPM? You're not going to get that from a cam. <laughs> do you want it at a realistic RPM range? Then, then we could talk about that. If I could just drive, it would be nice. A tow cam makes peak torque off idle, 1,000 to 2,000 RPM. With today's HP Transit, any RPM probably doesn't matter. Yeah, that's the thing. That's nice if you have an HP transmission is impressive. It's part of the re these multi or, or mega speed transmissions are part of the reason that these a lot of these vehicles are like a, a coyote Mustang, why they're so fast. Who's a good company to have my head CNC ports? I like the guys from Total Engine Airflow, but almost everybody has good CNC programs. The guys from Texas Speed, the guys from K-Tech, there's a bunch of good guys out there. What's the best LS stock manifold for towing? Probably the factory truck manifold, I would think. Who's a good company to have my head? Oh, heads part yep. Yeah. 455s and 400s. Okay. I should be running the Pontiac 350 with a with a torque storm here before too long. 8,000 RPM with the aluminum John Lingefelter wind intake. Ported to 85 with 85 millimeter throttle body. Yeah, it's probably not making peak power anywhere near there. What cam would you use with 243 heads? The heads don't care about the camshaft. What, what, what is the rest of what you want to get done with the heads? The camshaft choice is dictated by how much power you want, what kind of RPM range you want. Do you want to run it with a stock converter? Do you care about idle quality, fuel mileage, lots of other stuff. But not the heads. The heads don't care. The heads don't care that much. Uh, Wagner is good, too. Um uh, Eric Weingartner, I, he probably ports LS heads, doesn't he? I would imagine. I, I like Eric. For towing, do you want a cam that adds extra torque at 2,000 to 2,500 RPM range? 84% still saying yes. 413 and pre-68 440 had wedge heads. 68 and up have open chambers. The 68 and up exhaust manifolds will glow red hot. Fix was to weld up the chambers or use earlier heads or custom pistons. Hi, how far down are the are the pistons on those? Are the early and late 440s are is 
did they do what a lot of guys did and put the piston way down in the hole on the later 440s? 8,000 RPM is for uh, burnout competitions. Sound is a big part of it. It's trickful making a new line of small block forward heads soon. Why would they need to do that? I mean, you're going to do something better than the 11R heads? 96 Metro, tube chassis, 9-inch, 488, ladder bar, set it for a small block, 2,500. <laughs> this is kind of cool, huh? So just stick a, Ben, just stick a Turbo 400 in it and, and an LS and go. That sounds like it would be kind of diabolical. Metro has a drop front, front axle. So is it just a Metro body on top of a, um, like a rectangular frame or something? Seems like a lot of cutting and welding to make the Metro turn into that. I want to run nines on a small tire and use induction solutions. One kit, 3200 stall converter and turbo 400. Let's see. Ben, let's see. Oh, you... Are you using... Uh, you're using nitrous on it then? And are, are you using a carbureted induction system? What, what is it? All 440s have way too much piston to head. I run 35 or gaskets. Yeah, I, but but is it is it like 100 down in the hole or 200 down in the hole? On the 440? At what cam spring setup should factory lifters be upgraded with low miles? I don't think they should ever be upgraded. Uh, to give you an idea that L33 that I have from the wrecking yard, we have have changed cam and springs. Well, have changed cams like 10 times, I'm sure. Um, and changed springs at least three times, four times now. And have we've never changed the lifters. The lifters are the original lifters that came with the motor. And we've run a lot of runs, <laughs> hundreds of runs to um, 7,600 RPM. So they're... It's not a problem. 26 isn't terrible for what's been done already. If it's decent work. I, I agree. That is, that's cheaper than I thought it would be. I mean, it, it would be easy to spend $2,500 on a nine inch rear end. Eric is porting for head companies to be digitized. CNC is conservative porting because on core shift, you can only go to the edge. It's a compromise hand port for maximum flow. Yeah. all oh, that's great. Except that that's not, again, that's, if, if you're wanting to go to the nth degree, that's okay. But for most people, a set of CNC ported trick flow heads or airflow research heads or 243 heads will make more power than they make. 4150, 750. And you want to go nines with it? How, how big of a kit are you going to run on this thing? A lot? And 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 what what vehicle is this in? Single plane carburetor intake. Shout out to my buddy Nate. It's his birthday. Happy birthday, Nate. Nate Dog. We went 1014 at the track. Okay. All right, Danny. I got I got a cam for you. Carl Wagner in Wisconsin. I, I've never heard of him. I have some nice Wagner CNC 243s, and they did them for, I believe, NASCAR back when they ran LS2-based engines. I didn't know that they ever ran LS2-based engines in NASCAR. I knew that they ran, uh, NASCAR owned the um, sports car series for a while, and when they ran the Daytona prototypes back then, they, they ran LS-based motors, but they were um, five liters, though. They had cool, like, um, three-inch Bryant cranks in them. Which I, which I would love to get a hold of one of those for towing. You want a cam that adds extra torque at 2000 to 2,500 RPM. Most of us are saying yes, but we can't have that. Can we? So 
Hefner. Um, the problem is 4,500, uh, 4,500 4, horsepower at 7,000 RPM is going to be more than 2,000 foot pounds of torque. Just, you know, FYI. Stock bottom in 9351 Windsor. How much boost would you safely put to it? We've made over a thousand with those, so. Looks like cut and welded, firewall, sheet metal, seat floors, I think, are stock. Rear area is Flintstones. Nice. All stock except six packs are down in the hole. Any quench over 50 hertz. Yeah, I'm not worried about 50. I'm worried about 150. I'm worried about the piston being way down. Because on other Dodge stuff, I've seen that. For more torque at 2,000 RPM, get nitrous. That will that will add some torque, that's for sure. What is a six liter with the 4030 pistons and stock crank? It's a 30 over six liter. <laughs> it's 300 and what? 70 inches or something? You should go to Wallace Racing um, Displacement Calculator and find out. It will tell you exactly. Let's go there right now. Wallace Racing Displacement Calculator. So we have a bore of 4.030. And we have a stroke of 3.622. And we have eight cylinders. That's all we have to plug in. It calculates it 369.61, round up to 370 cubic inches. If I get an L6 manifold, can I leave it drive-by wire like it is currently, or do I have to convert to cable? I don't know what size your drive-by wire throttle body is. So if it's a, an L6 manifold is going to be a small throttle body. It's going to be a 78 millimeter throttle body. If you have a 90 millimeter or 90, probably be a 90 millimeter factory drive by wire throttle body. If you have that, then you need like an LS2 manifold or a Dorman LS2 or a Trailblazer SS. But I don't think that that will fit. I, I was thinking you were saying that you needed um, something that low profile. No, Danny, I got, I got that. I got that. I got, you're just joking. I'd like to see you big bang a 440 Mopar. Do you know what a good size center jet for a tripar for a Pontiac Royal Bobcat? I'm the, there are guys here that are Pontiac experts. I'm the wrong guy to ask that. I have no idea. Wouldn't you just start with the stock jet that, that came with it? 73 later, 400 440s are way down in the hole. No way to make them work without a piston change. That's that's what I was thinking. I mean, I'm, I'd be okay with a piston change or a rod change if it takes a rod change. I mean, if it's 150 down the hole, I wouldn't, maybe a rod change would be a better way to go. Keep the piston the same. Richard, the 1014 was on a 250 shot. Okay. So now after all this, I, for, I kind of forgot what your question is. You know, it's better than low pro intake, a blower sticking out of the hood. Yes, so we're, we're at 84% for towing. Do you want a cam that adds extra torque at 2,2500? Good luck. I do have some cams available. So here's my email address. I don't have any cams. They're going to add power at 2,000 RPM. 2,500, 
Yeah, I don't know. Do towing modes and trucks try to keep the RPM higher, like in the 2,000 RPM range, or is towing mode just disabling the overdrive? Does anybody know what the what the strategy is for when you go into tow mode? Does it does it remove the lockup converter, or what does it do? My friend owns a, owns a towing company. He runs a Chevy stock with with pump gas, and it's not worth modifying engines with drivers. Okay, thought I found a cheap cross ram for 413. I wouldn't message you back. Yeah, it's always that way. You find a good deal on something and then they're impossible to get a hold of. Just a raw change and still have a terrible open chamber stock head. Would need a head change and then compression. Yeah, you could do all that. But still, if you if you took the piston and zero decked it, even if you still had a bad head, it would still be way better than having the piston that far down in the hole. So it would be a, it would be a good thing. It would be a game. It's not ideal, but that's not what we're looking at. In, in, our, in our modifications, we're not looking for the best thing ever. We're looking for we were here and, and now we're here. I'm not saying we can't go to here. We can, but let's just, let's just make it better. But honestly, if I was going to put a rod in, I would also put a piston in it. National Grand National West Series ran a spec six liter based engine. The truck series in ARCA currently run a spec 396 LS based engine built by Elmore. Oh, cool. Will a roost blower make up for poor low end torque? Yeah, it will add lots of boost, will add lots of low speed power. Although a roots blower, the, the positive pressure will add will add torque. Um, but I don't know how if you want to be boosting the thing. Well, I guess you could boost it at 2000 RPM. But they had to do have short runners, though, so they, they don't do as well as they could. Have you got one of the hot rod cams? Like to try one in a backup motor? I don't think I have any of those available. Uh, Dustin, you need something low profile? Yeah, you're going to have to do an LS2, which has, a, I, if you have a 70 millimeter throttle body, you have to have that. You could, you could put a fast on it, um, but that's going to be a 102 millimeter throttle body. Although I think they make a 92 millimeter version too. It holds the car from shifting, at least on the Ford Explorer, keeps the car in a power band longer. Tow mode, hold the gear longer, increase line pressure and change when the torque converter locks. I'd like to see some Godzilla testing. I don't have any of those. Yeah, tunnel around with the blower, that works good. It obviously makes more power than having the short round mouth. So GM, you don't you think if we brought the if we had a piston, a 440 that had the piston 150 down in the hole, and we brought that piston up with a longer rod, 150, you don't think it would make more power? I guarantee you that it will make more power. Towing mode change the shift points, holds the trans in a lower gear until you reach a certain speed to prevent lugging the engine. Also uses downshifting when slowing down. It's Jake breaking it. <laughs> Have you thought about how much you want for the Pontiac 350 with a torque storm on it when you're done playing with it? It, it won't be sold like that. <laughs> The torque storm I use over and over and over again because I have a whole bunch of kits for that. Can't be doing that, yo. Can't be doing that nonsense. I still really want to do the, the HO 350, though. I want to do a version of that. Somebody find me some good uh, 48 casting heads. And they need to be um, good and they need to be workable. I mean, and I and I'll pay as much as one hundred and fifty dollars for them. <laughs> It'll make more power on race gas or alcohol. On pump gas, it will detonate. Okay. Forty eights go for more than one hundred fifty. I know. 
they won't even let me in a Pontiac chat for to talk about 48s for 150 bucks. Now I'm imagining a, a 60s F1 car with an LS1 tunnel around a blower. Think a um, Formula 5000 car with that. What's the highest boost you've seen out of a torque storm? Uh, the, the boost would just be a function of how fast you're spinning it and then the motor that you're applying it to. The, the torque storms that I've run have all been 700 to 750 horsepower kind of things. And I have run two torque storms on the LS. I have a set that were ported to 250 CFM at 550 lift milled to 64. That would be cool. Are the, what do they flow in their stock? Are they down around 200 or something or 210 or 220? You won't find one for 500 that needs to be, <laughs> I know. I know. That's why I, I can't, I can't afford like HO 350. Can, can't I use a different set of heads for that? Can I use 47s or something? Can I make the head? Be that head. What about intake runner length for towing? Yeah, we talked about that. Long long runners would would make more power than the cam timing would. 180 cfm or so. Any 72 cc head will work. What what are the chambers on the 48? Are they 72s? And then what are the valve sizes? See, this is why I come here. And then what was the stock compression ratio of that? Good, good question. Is worth a point of compression or bad gas? This not zero deck is like six pack blue printed compression needs a bracket cam. All of that's fantastic. I'm still sticking by my statement that if we brought the piston up to zero deck, it would make more power and I would be able to run it on pump gas on the dyno. I'm certain of it. Whether or not you could go out and run it in the vehicle, at temperature, towing, that'd be a different thing. <laughs> 66 to 67 cc's is what a, is what a factory 47 or 48 head is. And then Thumper, what were the, Valve sizes on that. Lost Racing has Pontiac head test to find a similar head. I, I've been there a lot. I've been down the Pontiac rabbit hole a whole bunch. My buddy Evan is doing a set of, um, uh, what are they? Ram Air 5 heads? That's crazy. A 350 HO Camaro. It was very fun when we put beer cam and transition like and had to do it next. You had a 350 HO Pontiac in your Camaro? Or did you have a 305 HO Camaro? A la L69. It's a 211.17. 670 closed chamber, 12, 13, 48, 62, 64. 48s for the 400 had 72 to 74 for the 350s it was 68 to 70 valves were 211 okay so could i mill that down enough to get 68 to 70 cc's 12 13 48 62 and 64 and would all of those have come with that valve size Have you Sonic checked the 4.8 board of 4 inches yet? I, I'd have to check with them to see if they did. I'd imagine moving the piston up to closer to zero deck would want less time regardless of fuel, faster burn rates, and be more efficient. Every time we've done that, it um, it's made more power. Said it was a 350 HO. 
in a Camaro? Or was it a Firebird? Easily milled the 64 and any small chamber head. Yeah, all of those have two 11s. There are three different 16 heads, 72, 98, round port. The 72s have screw and studs and big valves. I'll check and see what the... Um, I know I have some 6X heads. So this one says that's a 6X. That's a 6X. That's it says M12. That says 46. Was that was 46 one of them? Nope. <clears throat> Yeah, two sets of six X's, one's an M4. And then these 46's. And the other six X's are M12's. So we have an M12 six X, an M4 six X, and then those 46's. I believe it came with GM Performance 350 HO motor. Okay. Yeah, the, that was a crate motor. But we're talking about the um, the original Firebird. Ran flat top tier every pistons with a 906 head. You had to pull timing to drive it hard. Chamber design is terrible and detonation is always close. Is the 906 a... a um, Isn't that a Vortec head? Isn't that... Heard you can take off 100, but not sure if the 6X would get to 72. Maybe the 6X4 head. I mean, I don't, buy, I don't mind buying another set of heads, but... Oh, on the Dodge, okay. Set so of 62 heads untouched. I'll let you borrow them. If you pay the shipping, maybe put a valve job on them. I'll put some good springs on them. Sh shipping heads back and forth is is <laughs> it's probably going to be almost as much as me buying heads. M maybe not. <laughs> I shipped a bunch of intake manifolds to a guy who bought a bunch of modular stuff from me, and it, it was it was two hundred and twenty five dollars for shipping. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It is cheaper than buying some, that's right. Hard to fight pre-ignition on the intake side. Stock six-pack is down the hole about, yeah, 15 is not very much. Can you receive an aluminum block five, three to four inches? Yeah, and you, you don't even have to, you don't even have to sleeve it. Well, to four inches, you would have to sleeve it. But yeah, we've sleeved lots of aluminum LS blocks. We've gone out to way, way, way out more than four inches. We've gone to, um, you can go to uh, near 4200. We've gone to 4185. Do you have any information on the new HP Tuners Core ECU? I don't ever do anything with HP Tuners, so I'd be the wrong guy to ask. Try to get a head deal done for those 186s. It just didn't make any financial sense. Yeah, that was, it's just too much money to spend. And I, and I found a set of 461. So um, the guys at West Tech had some. Yeah, shipping them back and forth is, I mean, it, it'd be a couple hundred dollars, I'm sure, each way. I really need to find some here locally. And then also I need to, I'll need to change the pistons probably in that 350, right? Is it, is that HO motor going to have a flat top piston in it? If the pistons were down, could you just stroke or regrind the crank or bring them up or just not worth the money? Well, stroking the crank would mean changing it unless you offset ground it. Um, but you're not gonna be able to offset ground it that much. So you have to change the stroke, but then you'd be changing the displacement. So that wouldn't make any sense. Um, changing the rod length is realistic, especially if you we were talking about, if you're changing it 
Um, let's see, be be half of that though, right? No, it'd be it'd be that full length because that would be all the way up. So if you could change it a hundred thousandths or a hundred and fifty thousandths, that's a pretty significant rod change. But then you you do that with a rod and piston. You just put a better piston in it too if you're going to go to all that trouble. I've run six spec pistons, 15 out of the hole. We've done that on LS stuff sometimes is out of the hole, five or six thousandths. And we've done um, that on small block Fords too, three or four thousandths out. Super stock out street. Yeah, it, it gets really close with stuff. But it but when you're looking for every last little bit, you got to do stuff like that. Only some 428s had dish pistons, but all the stock slugs had cham chamfer around a crown. That's about seven to ten cc's. I I don't know what these three I don't know what these 350 pistons would be. Hello, I enjoy your content and had a question. My 7.4 push rods are showing some wear. Ever since adding beehive springs with a push rod adjuster, I got 73250, but it's smaller. Am I missing something? I, I don't know how you're adjusting it. The, the way that I do it is um, I tighten the rocker till you get to zero lash, put the cam on the heel of the cam so that it's not trying to open the valve. And then I start tightening the rocker down. And as soon as the rocker is at zero lash, meaning that the push rod is touching the lifter, the push rod is touching the rocker, and then the other end of the rocker is touching the valve. And as soon as there's no play, like you can't turn the, the push rod, then you tighten it down. And you want between a half a turn, you want it to be tightened all the way down against the rocker stud, the rocker stand. Uh, between a half a turn, let's say, and a turn and a half. If you do that, the push rod length work will will work fine. I, I doubt very seriously that you have, um, if you have a longer push rod than you need, it's there shouldn't be any wear on the spring. I mean, there shouldn't be any wear from that spring on the push rod. In fact, well, they both will wear. The tip of the, if it's a stock push rod, the tip of the push rod will wear and the rocker, the inside rocker cup will wear. But Probably not from that. That's usually from not having oil there. A brand new set of black diamond pistons were ordered for K Racing for Alan Johnson. I got three turns, three quarters of turn after zero lash. That's perfect. Pineac changed compression with chamber size on the heads. So they all had flat tops other than certain 428s. The chamfer louvers, the SCR, about a point from advertised. Um, the chamfer lowers the compression. So do they not really have the compression that they were saying? The real key is pistons. I've offset bush the pistons till I got caught. You can offset grind the crank and use Chevy rods. So did you offset bush the rods to bring the piston up? And offset ground the crank. Yep. I've seen that. Pack 12 18 would be enough for a sloppy best cam. I don't I don't know. I'm not that familiar with what a pack 12 18 is. I don't know what the specs are. A towing cam is a stock cam. Those work pretty well. Do you have any LS2 manifolds? No LS2 manifolds. I have a cam though. I have got cams for you. I don't have any rockers. I mean, I have stock rockers laying around, but nothing else. I guess proper preload on the lifter instead of full preload. No, if you have a stock lifter, the range of preload is a lot. The, the range of effective and useful preload is a lot. They advertised it higher than it actually was in most engines. So Thumper, if I put real flat top pistons in it with valve reliefs, then we would have we would actually have the compression that was that was its advertised compression. See, then it makes me wonder: should I run the advertised compression or should I run the actual compression that would have been? I've built any Pontiacs yet, but now I have a handful of them. One car. Is an eight lug car I haven't opened up? Oh, cool. 
So what, what were those eight lugs on? Rivieras or something? Or Catalinas? What were they on? Riviera, that's a Buick, right? You'll have to check it. Machining variances, valve reliefs, uh, head gasket success. Okay. Bondevilles, Catalinas, Venturas, Star Chiefs. Okay. That's cool. Coo, coo, coo. Okay, on that note, it is time to go. I will be back tomorrow morning. And please, everybody, you know, stay safe out there. It's the weekend. I got a lot of stuff to get done. I got to try to get shirts going for the LS Fest, which is coming up. Vic Riviera. Bottom line today, we have heads with good chambers, so pick your compression and put biggest stroker in it. I agree. And and pick aluminum heads, too. Don't pick iron heads. <laughs> On that note, it is time to go. I will see you guys all tomorrow.